Hi and welcome back to Free Science Lessons. By the end of this video you should be able to describe how the DNA is organised in eukaryotic and prokaryotic cells. You should then be able to describe the structure of chromosomes and what's meant by homologous chromosomes. Over the last few videos we've been looking at the structure of DNA. We've seen that DNA consists of two polynucleotide strands coiled into a double helix. Now in cells the DNA is arranged in a specific way and this is different between eukaryotes such as humans and prokaryotes such as bacteria. In prokaryotes, the DNA molecule is usually a circle with no free ends. However, in eukaryotes, the DNA molecules are linear. In other words, they've got two ends. In prokaryotes, the DNA molecules are relatively short compared to the DNA molecules in eukaryotic cells, which are much longer. In eukaryotes, the DNA molecules are tightly wrapped around proteins called histones forming complex structures called chromosomes. In contrast, the DNA in prokaryotes is not bound to histones, so prokaryotic DNA does not exist as a chromosome. Now I should point out that I've been discussing the DNA that we find in the nucleus of eukaryotes. However, we also find DNA in the mitochondria and in chloroplasts. Now this DNA is very similar to the DNA we find in prokaryotes. In other words, it's relatively short, circular and not attached to histones. OK, I'm showing you here the nucleus of a eukaryotic cell. The dark material in the nucleus is the DNA bound to histones. As you can see, it's not possible to see any distinct chromosomes, and that's because at this stage, the chromosomes have a relatively open structure. At this point, we refer to the DNA in histones as chromatin. Now, before a cell divides, all of the chromosomes are copied. These two copies remain attached at a point called the centromere. Now the two DNA molecules are called chromatids. So here's the left-hand chromatid, and here's the right-hand chromatid. Now I should just point out that some students find this confusing. Remember that we started with a chromosome. We replicated this, but the two chromosomes remain attached, and are now referred to as chromatids. At this stage, we now refer to the whole structure as a chromosome. At this point, the chromosomes condense. In other words, the DNA and histones form densely packed loops and coils, and the chromosomes become visible in the cell. Coming up, we'll take a look at what's meant by homologous chromosomes. OK, I'm showing you here a set of human chromosomes. Now, in human cells, we find 46 chromosomes. 23 of these chromosomes come from your father, and 23 come from your mother. Scientists call these homologous chromosome pairs. I'm showing you here the homologous pair of chromosome 9. Chromosome 9 contains over 700 different genes. Now one idea you need to understand is that the two chromosomes in a homologous pair have the same genes. This shows the position for the gene which determines your blood group. Now the position of a gene on a chromosome is called the locus for that gene. So this is the locus for the blood group gene. Now remember that a gene is a section of DNA which encodes the amino acid sequence of a polypeptide. Sometimes random mutations take place and this means that genes can occur in slightly different versions. Scientists call these versions of a gene alleles. Now the blood group gene has three main alleles. These are called A, B and O. Remember that a human inherits one of each of the homologous chromosomes in a pair from their father and one from their mother. This means that on a homologous pair of chromosomes, the alleles do not have to be the same. For example, this person could have inherited the A allele from their father and the B allele from their mother. Or they could have inherited an A allele from their father and another A allele from their mother. OK, now one final idea you need to understand is that a lot of the DNA we find in chromosomes does not code for polypeptides. Firstly, between the genes we find large amounts of repeating base sequences. These repeating sequences are non-coding. Secondly, even within functional genes, we find stretches of non-coding DNA. These are called introns, and we'll see this again in a later video. In the next video, we look at how the sequence of DNA is used to determine the amino acid sequence of proteins. Mm -hmm.